What now for Cuba? Where's it going? The problem with revolutions is that the, uh, the revolutionary fervour quickly wears off as memories of the appalling conditions which, uh, which brought it about fade. Revolutionaries themselves fade away and uh, the new generation they won't work for their sort of poor wages which uh, which exist today. So it becomes more and more difficult for the state to hold it all together uh, without resorting to well, unpleasant means. State bureaucracy becomes less and less efficient. The whole place is grossly overmanned. And of course, swallows more and more scarce resources. Corruption increases inevitably. And the, uh, the sort of grip on power begins to, uh, to slip away. I mean, there are plans to reduce the number of state employees by a million. What these people are going to take up once they're unemployed, uh, very difficult to see. Tourism, perhaps. I mean, the dramatic improvements in the immediate aftermath of the revolution slow down and uh, things begin to stagnate. Uh, there's only one newspaper. In Cuba. I mean, I think there's another. Ma I think there's a magazine as well, but of course. Uh, very much censored. Uh, similarly, TV. There, are, there were five channels. You could, in fact, if you were looking, get CNN. But the rest of it, I, I didn't understand at all. But it, it was very much like uh, state-sponsored TV elsewhere in the world. And criticism of the regime is a is a no no. You will be <laughs> big bother. But access to the outside world is increasing with the, uh, the unstoppable march of the, of the internet. Wi-Fi was only introduced into Cuba about two years ago. And uh, it's not everywhere. There are hot spots, mainly in the squares in the larger towns. You can always tell where it is because it's hardly open. <laughs> Young kids there with our know, young young people there with the cell phones. Everybody is looking down. It's not like the usual chat away, which you get in other in other squares, in other parts of the world. Uh, they're all intently looking at their screens. Um, and if you want to use Wi-Fi, or you want to use the internet in Cuba, you have to buy a card provided by the state and you get one hour of access to the internet for two cooks so one hour costs you about one pound sixty uh, and don't forget to switch your phone off otherwise it very very quickly disappears but you can use the card anywhere on the island and you buy these cards at the hotel desk nevertheless the military still have a pretty iron grip on the country, and of course, like all of these regimes, you, you never know who's watching who. So there's a sort of still an element of suspicion about the place. But the poorer Cubans, despite all of the hardship they've endured, they, they're still staunch supporters of the regime. And Fidel Castro and Che Guevara are still their heroes, as of course is uh, Jose Marti. Anyway, 2015, the Americans under President Obama decided to reopen the American Embassy in Cuba. But in 2017, there was a report that the Cubans were using some kind of sonic weapon and targeting the American Embassy with it, causing headaches and nausea. And, uh, and as a result of this, 
President Trump has reduced the American embassy to a skeleton staff and warned Americans that uh, they shouldn't really go to Cuba. Bizarre. I don't know what Cuba's got to gain from doing that. Nonsense. But it would still be, I mean, it would be absolutely naive to think everything is sweetness and light. Obviously, as a tourist state, they don't want you to see the, the downside of uh, a Marxist communist regime. Raul Castro, he didn't really want the job. Uh, and he changed the constitution so that no president of Cuba can stand for more than two terms. And this second term is coming up this month, I think which is what, March 2018. So the Cubans are awaiting with bated breath who the next president will be. Uh, because it, the direction it takes will depend very much on, uh, on their thoughts and where they think it should be heading. Exit visas are much easier to get though. In the past it was almost impossible to leave Cuba. But now, more and more Cubans are leaving for America because of the lack of opportunity. And the problem is that most of these are the young and the very well educated. If you're a doctor on, you know, miserly wages, then obviously you've got, you've got to seek your fortune elsewhere. And of course this leaves a population becoming older and older, uh, like many places in the world, uh, an increase in the number of elderly is a substantial burden on the state, both in terms of health and in terms of pensions. So uh, that will be another problem the new president has to uh, us to look at. I mean today, which is 2018, uh, a new partner is emerging in Cuba. Like much of the rest of the world of course, it's China. In 2017 China sealed a deal with a left-wing regime in Nicaragua to build a canal linking the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans across Nicaragua. I mean this had first been proposed years and years and years ago by, and one of the main sponsors of this was the rich American Vanderbilt family, I mean, all, I think for mainly the railroads. But it all came to nothing and, and many, many schemes since then, again, with them backed by Americans, uh, has, uh, has fallen by the wayside. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this new scheme funded by money from, uh, I think it's from Hong Kong. We will see. Watch this space. But of course the, the new canal will be able to support the uh, these monstrous 400,000 ton ships, which of course the American-owned Panama Canal cannot do. Although they have in fact increased the size of the locks in the Panama Canal, but they, they will not take these uh, these so-called super ships. So, whether there is sufficient shipping to support both canals will uh, will be a major worry, I would think, for the uh, for the Americans. Uh, another sign of Chinese influence is that all tourists being ferried about were travelling in Chinese buses. Uh, they have a fleet of about 7,000 of these Chinese buses at Yutong in, uh, in Cuba, which keeps you separate from the, uh, the ordinary Cuban. They didn't get to travel around in posh buses. I mean, tourism and more private enterprise will undoubtedly increase the wealth of the country. Whilst capitalism is very good at 
increasing wealth, it's absolutely useless distributing it fairly. Uh, and that will be the key to the regime's success in the future. Raising the money and making sure everybody gets a fair share of it. Unfortunately, experience in other parts of the world shows that that doesn't often happen. Uh, the rich get richer and the poor don't seem to get very much richer at all, so the, the gap between the two increases more and more, which of course leads to resentment. So, another revolution perhaps. It makes Brexit seem <laughs> a remarkably tame venture. So I hope that that little explanation about, about Cuba and what's going on at the moment encourages you to go and visit the place before it changes. It is quite unique uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I uh, really did, as did uh, everybody else in the group. I, I don't recollect anyone being disappointed. Anyway, they, these are the videos which follow. Uh, so, take care and uh, once this snow's disappeared, uh, I might see you. you. might see me on the bank in the uh, the last two weeks of the season. Bye bye.